The 1988 John Carpenter film They Live has a problem, and it's not the acting or the fact that the story starts to fall apart in the third act. It's that the film's paranoid conspiracy theory has attracted right-wing, anti-government, tinfoil hat aficionados and phony truthers. They appropriate the imagery of the film and create memes that are frankly anti-Semitic and will not be shown here, but make no mistake, the film is not expressing a desire for small government conservatism, nor does it propagate crackpot conspiracy theories about an ethnic or religious minority running the world. This is merely another example of people with small minds missing the point. The subjects of They Live are actually overtly leftist. Sympathy for the middle class and working poor, desire for racial justice, anti-capitalism, and especially anti-Ronald Reagan. The film was released mere days before the 1988 presidential election in which Reagan's vice president, George Herbert Walker Bush, was poised to defeat Democratic challenger Michael Dukakis. This was actually a coincidence. Though highly political, the release date of They Live was initially about a month prior and moved only to avoid stiff multiplex competition. Even so, the happenstance of They Live's release date was practically serendipitous. It allowed the audience to have the end point of the Reagan administration firmly in mind. They Live is an allegorical and admittedly outrageous version of the Reagan 80s. The film is anything but subtle, but if anyone has any doubts about this, Carpenter himself has not been shy about it. Once saying, By the end of the 70s, there was a backlash against everything in the 60s. And that's what the 80s were, and Ronald Reagan became president, and Reaganomics came in. So a lot of the ideals that I grew up with were under assault, and so by the late 80s, I'd had enough and I decided I had to make a statement, as stupid and banal as it is, but I made one, and that's They Live. I just love that it was giving the finger to Reagan when nobody else would. The feeling is definitely there. It's a new morning in America. Fresh, vital, the old cynicism is gone. Yes, the alien politician says, morning in America, practically the tagline for the Reagan administration. They Live is loosely adapted from a short story, but all the politics infused into the film are the invention of Carpenter himself, who wrote the screenplay under a pseudonym. So what specific aspects of the Reagan 80s is Carpenter ridiculing, condemning, and satirizing? Nada and Frank live in a community for the poor, homeless, or otherwise struggling. Like many homeless, a number of these people may have mental health issues. When Reagan was governor of California, he threw more than half of the state's mental health patients out of hospitals and onto the streets and abolished the hospital's ability to institutionalize patients with severe mental illness. Most simply became homeless. As president, Reagan repealed a Carter-era mental health reform and slashed federal funding for mental health by about 30%. During his presidency, about 40,000 beds in mental hospitals were eliminated. In They Live, homelessness is a serious problem. Early in the film, Nada says he still believes in America. He keeps himself out of trouble and he does the right thing, so he imagines that everything will eventually pick up for him. He sees himself living in squalor, but still holds on to the dream that men like Reagan extol. Later in the film, he stumbles onto a resistance movement against alien forces who have taken over America and, indeed, the entire world. He puts on high-tech sunglasses that break through the lie and discovers a world of propaganda. Reagan was no stranger to such things. He created a secret agency known as the Office of Public Diplomacy, an organization designed to be used on the American people and to manipulate politics in South America. The OPD planted phony news stories throughout newspapers about right-wing Contra terrorists. This was because Reagan was arming them to try to overthrow the Nicaraguan government. The OPD surveilled and intimidated journalists who were not reporting what the Reagan administration wanted. On the eve of Reagan's re-election in 1984, the OPD spread a story that Soviet fighter jets were arriving in Nicaragua. Many journalists ran with it, but the story later turned out to be a hoax. 
The OPD's activities were uncovered by the Comptroller General in 1987 and declared illegal soon after. The aliens are not the only ones to blame in the film. Human beings collaborate with these creatures to earn wealth and power. Humanity is to blame for allowing these monsters to take away our freedoms with the promise of prestige and what one collaborator in the film calls the good life. Similarly, the Reagan administration had a lot of dealings, some clearly illegal, with unsavory characters, and it's hard not to notice some parallels. Reagan sided against the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan and funded religious extremists with almost $5 billion in taxpayer money. These extremists were the Mujahideen, some of whom eventually became the Taliban. The Reagan administration illegally sold arms to Iran and supported South American terrorists. These groups may not be as inhuman as the aliens Carpenter showcased in his film, but bear in mind that in the aftermath of Reagan's support for the Contras, Reagan and the United States government were tried in the International Court of Justice for their part in the deaths of about 50,000 human beings. The Reagan administration was convicted of violating Nicaragua's sovereignty and encouraging widespread crimes against humanity. So, yeah, not exactly collaborating with alien monsters, but not as far off as one might think. They put you at the starting line. And the name of the game is Make It Through Life. Only everyone's out for themselves and looking to do you in at the same time. Perhaps more than anything else, They Live tackles capitalism under the Reagan administration, when Nada puts on his sunglasses, he often sees the word obey, another conformist propaganda. The reason right-wing audiences might mistake they live for something that bolsters this ideology is because of the misconception that capitalism fosters individuality, whereas a regulated government does not. In reality, capitalism applauds the very small number of entrepreneurs who capture huge portions of mass markets. Naturally, this requires manufacturing products on a mass scale, which itself imposes uniformity on society, meaning people all purchase the same products and a great number of people all perform the same labor. Not that there is anything inherently wrong with identical suburban residential developments, but the idea that capitalism creates individuality or praises individuality is not accurate. Neither does socialism, really, but let's not be blind here. Capitalism hopes to serve the greatest number of people, which means homogenizing everything from consumer products to entertainment. When capitalism is criticized in media like they live, or in politics or private discussions, there is often a defensive response akin to, what's wrong with making money? As if capitalism simply means earning a paycheck. It does not. People earn money in socialist countries, and European countries with more health, safety, and anti-monopoly regulations, and everywhere else. I pay my bills making this show. Most any developed country is a combination of capitalist and socialist economic policies, including America. When they live criticizes capitalism, it is not taking aim at someone's paycheck. It is taking aim at the ideology the ideals that capitalism values. Nada believes in America. He believes his setback must only be temporary because he never quits his jobs. Frank knows better. He is aware that capitalism establishes power in a minority upper class that exploits the working class majority. Frank tells Nada that they gave the factory owners a break from time to time, but management did not return the favor. Wealthy capitalists prioritize profit over the good of the nation, partly out of greed and partly out of a misunderstanding that their desire for wealth will trickle down to lower economic classes. This is called voodoo economics, and it is bunk. They Live cannot cover everything that the Reagan administration did, like supporting apartheid in South Africa and its purposeful lack of action towards the AIDS crisis in America. But Carpenter was unrelenting in his attack on greed in America during the Reagan administration. He once said, I got resistance to the fact that it was all about money. They wanted me to maybe make them cannibals or something, to bring it down to the lowest common denominator. But I stuck to my guns. Reagan was famously hostile to workers' unions, 
and the effects of his deregulation efforts are still being felt today. The ending is fascinating because Nada exposes the aliens, but would that be enough? Would everyone who collaborated with the aliens for power and wealth suddenly lose interest and switch sides now that we know about the invisible system of oppression? People know about unchecked capitalism today and we still buy products manufactured in overseas sweatshops, products created by child labor, and in some cases, forced labor. The ending to They Live is rather optimistic if it tells us that unfettered greed and inhuman conditions can be solved by destroying a satellite dish. Not as sunglasses allow him to see the aliens, but more than that, they allow him to see ideology. They Live is superficially about an alien conspiracy, but that is just the surface. The aliens are Reagan and 80s capitalists, Reaganites. The sunglasses expose the invisible system that maintains the country for enough of the population so that they do not oppose it and grants no power to the poor as they would be the most likely to oppose it. The conspiracy is only narratively about a screwball theory on alien invaders. Deep down, the conspiracy of they live is the ideology of capitalism. Hi everyone, if you like what I do, please click on the orange Patreon link below. That's how this show happens. It's also the only way to request an episode. Also, there are other benefits to pledging, so check it out, the information is on my Patreon page. I'll see you next week.